In this video, I'm going to solve this question. Consider the square with these vertices. Five points are independently and randomly chosen from the square. If a point satisfies this inequality, then a pair of dice are rolled. Otherwise, a single die is rolled. Let capital N be the total number of dice rolled. For small n between 5 and 10, we have to find the probability that capital N is equal to small n. And these are the options that are given to us. Before solving the question, let me clear one thing over here. The first term in these options, let's say this term is 10 C n minus 10. Okay. This is one divided by two raised to the power n minus 10. And this is one divided by two raised to the power n. Similarly, in part number C, this is five C n minus five. 1 divided by 4 raised to the power n minus 5, 3 divided by 4 raised to the power 10 minus n. So this is how you have to read these options. Okay. Now let's take a look at the information that's given to us. So we have a square with these vertices. So first of all, let's construct a square with this information. So let's say this is the square that we have here on this axis, you have the x values here on this axis, you have the y values. So this is 0 comma 0. This is 2 comma 0 this point is 0 comma 2 and this point is 2 comma 2 okay now we are given that five points are independently and randomly chosen from this square if a point satisfies this inequality then a pair of dice are rolled so first of all let's see how can we impose this inequality on this square it's given that x plus 2y is less than equal to 2. So let's first try to draw the line corresponding to x plus 2y equal to 2. So if we have to draw the line corresponding to this, then we can see that if x is equal to 0, then y is equal to 1. And if y is equal to 0, then x is equal to 2. So these are the two points that this line satisfies. And let's just draw these two points to get the line. So the first point is 0 comma 1 and the second point is 2 comma 0. 0 comma 1 is somewhere over here. So this is 0 comma 1 and 2 comma 0 is this. That means the line corresponding to x plus 2y equal to 2 is this. Okay. And now let's mark the region such that x plus 2y is less than equal to 2. See, on this yellow line, you have x plus 2y equal to 2. x plus 2y less than equal to 2 implies this entire region. I'm going to call this region region A. So this shaded region is region A and this region is region B. Okay. So the question is saying that five points are independently and randomly chosen from the square. If a point satisfies this inequality, that means if a point lies in region A, then a pair of dice are rolled. Otherwise, if a point lies in region B, then a single die is rolled. Okay. Now let's take an example to see how this works. So we have to select five points. Let's assume that the first point is over here. Okay. If the first point is over here, then this implies that a single die is rolled. Okay, because it's given over here that if a point satisfies this inequality, then a pair of dice are rolled. So the point number one is in region B. That means a single die is rolled. Okay, now let's say point number two is over here. That means even for point number two, a single die is rolled. So even for point number two, a single die is rolled because even point number two is in region B. Let's say point number three is over here. So point number three is in region A. Now because point number three is in region A, now a pair of dice are rolled. Okay. So now a pair of dice are rolled. Now let's say that point number four is somewhere over here. So point number four is in region B. That means even for point number four, a single die is rolled. And let's say point number five is somewhere over here. That means point number five is in region A. So for point number five, a 
pair of dice are rolled okay so this is one example of how to think about this situation now in this particular example what is the total number of dice rolled well over here it's one over here it's one here it's two here it's one here it's two now capital n is the notation that we are using for the total number of dice rolled that means for this particular example capital n is equal to seven okay and we have to find the probability that capital n is equal to small n where small n is in this particular range okay i hope the construct of the question is clear let's proceed further then so i am interested in capital n so i'm going to write an expression for capital n now and then i will explain you that expression so i can write that capital n is equal to 5 plus number of points in region A. Okay, so this is how I can write capital N and according to this expression, the minimum value that capital N can take is 5. Let me explain you this expression in detail. To explain this expression, let me construct a square once again. To understand this expression of N, take a look at this square. So once again, we are going to work with 5 points. Now see, irrespective of where a particular point lies, whether in region A or in region B, you're going to roll a die at least once. That means it doesn't matter where these five points lie, I'm going to roll the die at least once. So I have to roll it at least once, irrespective of whether the point is in region A or the point is in region B. This is what I'm calling region A and this is what I'm calling region B. Now let's do an exercise over here. Let's say the point number one lies over here. That means you have to roll the die only once. Let's say point number two is here. That means once again, one die. Let's say point number three is here. That means you have to roll die once again. Okay. Let's say point number four is over here. So only one die. And let's say point number five is over here. That means now you have to roll a pair of dice. That means one more die again. So that means n is equal to 5 plus 2. That is equal to 7. And that's why we can write that n is equal to 5 plus number of points in region A. In this example, we have two points in region A. So n is equal to 5 plus 2 and that is 7. Okay. I hope this much is clear. So now let's work with this further. Now because n depends on number of points in region A, I can actually call it a success. So I can define success and failure and I can say that a success is when a point is in region A that is called success and failure is when a point is in region B. Okay, so this is how I'm defining success and failure. Now see what's going to happen in this case. If I talk about point number one, if I talk about point number one, then point number one has two possibilities. Either point number one will be in region A or the point number one will be in region B. Now if point number one is in region A, I'm calling this outcome a success. And if point number one is in region B, I'm calling this outcome a failure. Okay, so basically this is nothing but a Bernoulli trial. A Bernoulli trial has two possible outcomes. One of them is a success and the other one is a failure. Over here, choosing point number one in this square has two outcomes. Either the point will be in region A or the point will be in region B. If the point is in region A, I'm calling it a success. If the point is in region B, I'm calling it a failure. Let's say the random variable corresponding to this trial is x1. So for success, x1 is going to take the value 1. For failure, x1 is going to take the value 0. And now to complete the distribution, we need to figure out what is the probability that x1 equal to 1 and what is the probability that x1 is equal to 0. Okay, see this is quite simple. The probability that x1 is equal to 1 means what's the probability that point 1 will be in region A. 
Well, that's quite simple. First of all, let's find the area of region A. Now, region A is a triangle. That means area of region A is equal to half multiplied with base, base is 2, multiplied with height, that is 1. That means the area of region A is 1. So, 1 is the area of region A. And what's the area of square? Well, in this case, the area of square is 2 square, that is 4, right? So, area of region A is 1, area of square is 4. Now, what's the probability that if you choose a point, then that point will lie in region A? Well, the probability is 1 divided by 4 because the area of region A is 1 and the area of the square is 4. Now, because the probability that a point will lie in region A is 1 by 4, what's the probability that a point will lie in region B? Well, that's going to be 3 by 4 because the sum of these two probabilities have to be 1 as these are the only two possible outcomes. So, if the probability of this is 1 by 4, then this probability has to be 3 by 4, right? So, from here, we get that x1 follows a Bernoulli distribution with 1 by 4 probability. This is the probability of success. So, x1 follows Bernoulli with probability of success equal to 1 by 4. Now, you can do the same exercise for point number 2. Basically, even for point number 2, there are two possibilities that either the point number 2 will be in region A or the point number 2 will be in region B. You can call this a success. This is a failure. The random variable corresponding to this experiment, I can call it x2. So for success, x2 will take the value 1. For failure, x2 will take the value 0. Once again, what's the probability that x2 is equal to 1? Well, this is equal to 1 divided by 4. And what's the probability that x2 equal to 0? This is equal to 3 divided by 4. So in this case, x2 follows a Bernoulli distribution with the probability of success 1 divided by 4. Similarly, you can do the same exercise for point number 3 and you can call the random variable x3 over there. So x3 will also follow a Bernoulli distribution with 1 by 4 probability of success. x4 will also follow a Bernoulli distribution with 1 by 4 probability of success. And x5 will also follow a Bernoulli distribution with probability of success 1 divided by 4. Okay, I hope this much is clear. Now let's go back to how we defined capital N. If you recall, I defined capital N as 5 plus total number of points in region A. Okay, now because if a point is in region A, I have started calling it a success. That means I can also write that n is equal to 5 plus total number of successes that we get. Right, this is because if a point lies in region A, I call it a success. So instead of saying total number of points in region A, I can actually say total number of successes over here. If there are three successes, that means there are three points in region A. In that case, n will be equal to 8 and so on. Okay, now I can define a random variable x as the sum of x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5, where these x's, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, all of them follow a Bernoulli distribution with probability of success 1 divided by 4 and x1 will take the value 1 if the point number 1 is a success, x2 will take the value 1 if point number 2 is a success, x3 will take value 1 if point number 3 is a success and so on. That means this capital letter X is your total number of successes. So your total number of successes is just the sum of x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 and because all of these are following a Bernoulli distribution, capital X, which is the sum of all of these, will follow a binomial distribution n, p. And in this case, because we have 5 Bernoulli trials, that means n is equal to 5 and the probability of success is 1 divided by 4. This implies that x follows 
a binomial distribution with 5 comma 1 divided by 4. Note that it's also given to us in the question that the points are selected independently. So all of these trials are independent. That's why x follows a binomial distribution with these parameters. Now we are done with the entire setup of this question. Now we are just left with the last part of this question in which we have to do a basic calculation. So now I can write that capital N is equal to 5 plus capital X. So instead of writing total number of successes, I can just write capital X over here. So now capital N is equal to 5 plus capital X because X is nothing but total number of successes. And we have to find the probability that capital N is equal to small n. Now because capital N is equal to 5 plus capital X, this implies that we have to find the probability that 5 plus capital X is equal to N. This implies that we have to find the probability that capital X is equal to N minus 5, which is now a straightforward task because we know that capital X follows a binomial distribution with these parameters. And this is the probability that we have to find now. So it's quite simple now. We can directly follow the binomial formula which says that the probability that capital X equal to R is equal to N C R P raised to the power R Q raised to the power N minus R. In this case that we are given over here, N is equal to 5, R is N minus 5, so R is N minus 5, P is the probability of success, P is equal to 1 divided by 4, Q is the probability of failure, which is also equal to 1 minus P. So if P is equal to 1 by 4, that means Q is equal to 3 by 4. Now all we have to do is substitute these values and find the final answer. So let's do that. So substituting these values, we get probability that capital N equal to N, which is also equal to the probability that capital X equal to N minus 5. This is equal to 5C N minus 5. 1 divided by 4 raised to the power n minus 5, 3 divided by 4 raised to the power 5 minus n minus 5. This is n and this is r. So n minus r in this case is 5 minus n minus 5. If I open the brackets, this can be written as 5 minus n plus 5. That means this power is equal to 10 minus n. So your final expression for probability that capital N is equal to n is 5c n minus 5, 1 divided by 4 raised to the power n minus 5, 3 divided by 4 raised to the power 10 minus n. That means the right answer is part c. Okay, this is what we got. So this is the right answer. And that's it for this question.